Hey everyone, Dan Bernard here with another tutorial. And today I'm gonna to be going over just some of the basics of Adobe Audition. And since there was just a new release, a new update for Adobe Audition upgrading to the 2017 CC release, I figured what better time than right now. So my goal for these videos is to hopefully educate some people that might be a little intimidated by it, get them familiar with the basics and get those people who are unfamiliar with the program, give them a nice ground level foundational understanding of the basics of the software. So when you open up Adobe Audition for the first time, you'll be greeted with a screen that's very similar to this. So up here in the upper left, we have the files and favorites panel. The files panel is pretty much where all your files will live if you bring in a file. So if I just drag in a file from, let's say the uh, doors and windows, doorknob sound effects file, I can quickly access that file, bring it into my multi-track session. If I wanna click up here on multi-track, bring a new session into Adobe Audition, go ahead and bring that in here if I want and there's my file. Alternatively, if you go down here to the media browser, uh, you can have your root folders here on the left-hand side, and then over here on the right-hand side, if you double-click, that's what's inside that file. So right here, I've double-clicked into the doors and windows sampler pack, and here's all the different files within that file. If I go down here and click on the autoplay button, whatever file I click on, I will hear a preview of that file. And that's really nice if I wanna just quickly listen to a sound before I select it. Over here in the effects rack, this is where I can manipulate all the parameters of the desired effect I put on the track. For example, if I were to have track one highlighted here in my multi-track display, and I come over here, if I click on the arrow under the first effect rack, I can choose from a wide range of different effects, such as amplitude compression, delay, echo, modulation, reverb, and so on and so forth. Over here is the markers panel. If I wanna remember where a certain place is here in my timeline, I can hit M for marker, and that marker will come up here in the markers window. And if I have a number of markers in my project, I can quickly just double click on a certain marker and my playhead will immediately snap to that location. Over here is the properties panel, and this gives you just very basic info about the sound that you have selected here, um, including the start, end, and duration time. Basic settings, if you wanna adjust the gain, you can change the clip color, you can click lock and time so it won't move, you can have it loop or even mute it. You can also go over here to stretch and turn that mode on in real time. And over here we have the history panel, so if you need to, you can go back to the very beginning of your session, click on open, and it'll actually undo everything you've done in that entire session. And pretty much you can start back from the beginning. If for whatever reason you have a limited number of undos at your disposal in Audition, you can always navigate to your history panel and go back as far as you need to to make that correction. And then next to the history panel here is the video panel. And this is where your video will play if you're doing some kind of project that involves referencing video footage. So for example, if I was working on a project and I had to spot in a number of footsteps and I had some footage of a person's feet walking on pavement, I would need to know exactly where in the footage the person's foot is hitting the pavement so I can accurately place the sound accordingly. And this panel here is where you would reference that video. Over here on the right hand side is where the essential sound panel lives. And this is a wonderful tool. You can quickly select a clip in your timeline and then using the essential sound panel, designate what type of clip that is. In this case here, the doorknob sound would be a sound effect. So I'll designate that as a sound effect, which puts that nifty little icon down in the lower left-hand corner. And from there, I have a number of presets I can choose from and then control the parameters within those presets there, utilizing these convenient sliders. Next to the multi-track editor here is the mixer. One thing that I really like about this recent update is that when you're inside the mixer window here, you can now easily identify what track you're mixing just by looking at the color of the slider because they correspond to the color of the track. If I were to change this track color by selecting this button here to this pink color, the fader would then change as well. If I wanna make it green, it would turn green, so on and so forth. And that works with any track I have, and this works with any track. And of course down here we have our levels panel so I can 
quickly see how loud my clips are and if they are peaking or not by going past the zero dB marker here. And then down here in the lower right is the selection and view panel. And essentially what that does is it gives you the same option as clicking up here and zooming in or rather than using the time selection tool and just highlighting an area, I could, you know, dial in that selection in a little bit more if I wanted to by typing in specific time in the start and or duration columns. So I hope this gives you all a comfortable place to start if you're just getting into Adobe Audition CC 2017. Now you know at least what all the panels mean. Hopefully what this video does is give you a very basic understanding of the panels, what you can do within those panels, where they're located, and hopefully give you a little more confidence and comfort getting into this program. If you have any questions or comments, go ahead and leave them down in the comment section below. If you like this video, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. And if you want to stay up to speed on my Adobe Audition basics tutorials, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Once again, my name is Dan Bernard and thanks for stopping by.